Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Chris McFarland, who's the CEO of Zero Limit Group. Chris, welcome to the program. Hey, Mike. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Hey, I want to get into what you do to serve your clients, but give us a little bit of your background and your entrepreneurial journey up to this point in your career. Well, um, just to give a brief overview, I've uh, fundamentally been an insurance agent and financial advisor for uh, over 20 years. And uh, my big project currently is showing people how to build their own bank um, using some more modern concepts, uh, updating a, a, an idea called infinite banking that's been around for quite a while. And uh, we're really excited about that. And um, one, of the, one of the biggest applications for that is also helping people to get out of debt a lot faster without doing a new loan, um, such as, or at least not a new recourse loan. We can talk a little bit more about the difference between a recourse and non-recourse loan. Yeah, that sounds really good because I know that when you think about retirement or money or finances, debt is such a big constrictor there. And, um, you know, the Latin root word of the word mortgage is death grip. And so, I mean, having a mortgage. Ooh, awesome. and, I love that you know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not many people do. I, I, I did spend about 10 years in the mortgage industry back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, I, I know that a lot of people feel like, you know, well, there's good debt and bad debt. Might be That might be the case. But I think that debt, consumer debt, and cash flow, and also access to capital is so, so important. And I think that a lot of people don't realize those ramifications. So talk a little bit about um, how debt is uh, impacted, that you can help clients with debt, and then let's merge into what this infinite banking concept is. Awesome. And, and debt is absolutely an important issue, but I don't want to make it sound like that's the only thing we're talking about because the other really big application that I do is just anybody who's saving money, period. And I mean not just for retirement, but even just in a savings account, like saving up for a down payment on a house or for any other purpose. Um, the biggest thing we're doing, actually the biggest takeaway I would want anybody to have is to set up their own bank. Because think about how much money banks make. You know, you were in the mortgage industry, right? So if the only reason you wouldn't want to be your own bank is if you didn't know how banks operate. And basically, they make money by borrowing money. And um, so I'd like to take a second to actually explain to the general audience why that is. Because a lot of people don't really think about this. But, but you would certainly know this, Mike. <clears throat> but when you were a mortgage broker, you essentially help people to get loans and you did the best you could, and maybe if they had great credit a few years back, they could get as low as like 2.5 or something. I'm sure it's a lot higher right now. Uh, that's not really my industry, but the ones I see, um, newer ones are at like 4.5. Um, but the banks borrowed that money from Uncle Sam at around 1%, right, Mike? Yeah. And so that's what I mean by being a bank. And I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. We just want to be like that ourselves. If we could borrow money and make money by borrowing it, that would be pretty cool, especially if we didn't have to pay it back until we died, right? You know, and, and the, so, so what I would say is this. It sounds good to say make money by borrowing money, but I'm kind of like an old traditional uh, low risk type person. So it would mm -hmm. irk me to no end to have that big debt, even if it was placed somewhere else. So what do you do to uh, assuage the fears of someone going, okay, mm -hmm. yes, there's that monthly payment of the debt service, but just look over here and this is where it's coming from. I think that would help people too as well. Very good. And uh, thank you for asking that question. I, th I think what, what we're really doing fundamentally is eliminating the debt payment that people have by yeah. repositioning the debt from a recourse to a non-recourse position. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to come back to what I do, but I'm going to tell just a brief side story. My 80-year-old mom is uh, in the process of going through counseling for a reverse mortgage. 
And uh, if anybody doesn't know, and, and I don't want to get into a whole other topic, but a reverse mortgage is a collateralized non-recourse loan that people don't have to pay back until they either move out of their house or die. And so the infinite banking concept is the only other thing that I am aware of in my career that people can use as a collateralized non-recourse loan. That sounds all technical. Mike, I also like to call that not yo daddy's loan. Yeah. Okay. Because the loan we're all used to, you have to apply for, you could be turned down if you're late on payments. Um, you're going to get in trouble with credit. And if you're really, really late on payments, they're going to write the whole thing off and it be could become a taxable event, as you well know, right? But a non-recourse loan is the opposite of all that. You don't have to make payments on it and you don't have to pay it back basically until you die. So yeah. bringing it back to what I actually do in my personal business the last 20,000 that I've spent on advertising and recruiting and marketing, I've first, before I spent it with vendors, I put it into a savings account. But that savings account is not at Bank of America or Wells Fargo or any of the other wonderful financial institutions out there. It's at the bank of Chris McFarland that's sponsored by a company, I, I probably shouldn't mention their name, but an insurance company, a great big insurance company that has the highest possible ratings and has been around since the time of Lincoln, okay? They sponsor my account, but I'm in control of my account. I took money that I would have just put into my savings account and then gone and spent, but I put it into my personal banking account and I borrowed it out at 3%. And I have no chance of losing money. It's a principal guaranteed contract. And in the last 10 years, I've averaged making 8%. Just using the actual numbers over the last 10 years, if I borrowed my own money at 3% and got paid anything close to 8 on it, am I not acting That's a like nice bank? Rent. Yep. And, Very nice. And just to kind of note there, no monthly payments are required from that yep. unless you want to okay. and if you right. don't make a payment you're not going to have your credit dinged and get in trouble and owe penalties that's exactly right interesting that's exactly right mm -hmm. now i know a little bit about the industry and i will say this and you can correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. um it might sound uh strange to say my own bank or uh sponsored by a big life insurance company this is, sounds weird let me run but in reality for hundreds and hundreds of years big yep. banks have put their own money, our savings account money, yep. into properly structured life insurance contracts. So yep. the vehicle, the, the financial vehicle of a life insurance contract used in this way is not some new idea. Hardly, hardly. And people could go, go this is not exactly what I do, because as I mentioned, I'm doing an updated version of it that's different in some important ways. But fundamentally, it's the same as Nelson Nash. Yeah. If people want to go Google uh, the infinite banking concept or be your own bank or Nelson Nash. And here's a couple of the key differences. Um, as you just articulated, um, financial institutions and wealthy individuals have been doing this infinite banking concept for a long time. And one of the reasons it's been limited to people like that and institutions like that is because on a whole life policy, <clears throat> generally you're looking at at least five years down the road before you could start taking those loans back out in the way that I've been describing. What I left out in my own little story is everything I said, this is a policy that I opened only about 18 months ago, and I started taking those loans out within the first 12 months. Hmm. So it's Only accelerated and gives you more freedom and flexibility. Very much so, and for a very, very simple reason. Um, you know, if, you, if, if anybody out there knows anything about life insurance, there's one thing you can generally count on. Like, we make the old joke about death and taxes, but the other thing you can generally count on is a surrender charge in a life insurance policy. Hmm. But not with us. Because you're not, we work you're with not canceling it to have a surrender charge. You're reaccessing it in the form of what you're calling a loan against your own quote unquote bank because it's your own policy. Yes. And just to be perfectly clear, every single insurance company in America has a permanent life insurance policy that has some terms and conditions that are mostly for the most part, pretty similar about borrowing money out. There's nothing mm -hmm. unique about what I'm saying about that. Yeah. What's, what's unique is we're waiving the surrender charge. Hmm. And that means that it's truly uh, 
like a savings account, like a, a, a bank that you can use right now, not in five years from now. Yeah. And typically if, if people, if, if anybody out there is already familiar with IBC or be your own bank, usually the example that they typically use is something like, well, within three to five years, if you overfund it enough, you could go and finance yourself for a truck, you know, or something like that. Right. And, and that's cool. That's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but what if we could start doing it a lot faster than that? And depending on our, like you said, cash flow, pay off a house or a yeah. business obligation or any other, any other recourse debt. You know, the thing that I love about, I, I've, I've read the book Infinite Banking years ago now from Nelson Nash, mm -hmm. so I love the concept. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a new 2.0, um, you know, enhancement to that, love, I love what you're doing here. The thing that I love about this is too many times people think of the phrase life insurance and they think of it as death benefit, but you're, right. you're, providing ways to have living benefits while you're living in the form of, wow, day-to-day -day living expenses and mortgage and car and all the things that you need. Yep. I think that's so neat. And you mentioned business owners. What are some creative ways that um, this kind of approach helps an, an entrepreneur? Well, yeah, great question. Thanks, Mike. And I, I think that, I mean, a anybody can use this. Anybody who has positive cash flow and is either saving money or has debt. That's a whole lot of people, right? Yeah. Couple. Um, the program cert it certainly will not work, sadly, it, but it just, just plain this concept will not work without positive cash flow. And, and realistically, about $300 a month. So this isn't, I'm not sit sitting here saying this is for everybody. But I'll tell another story here. My son, um, uh, my grown son, uh, is a, a business owner. Uh, he's in his late 20s. His wife's expecting. He has a, a moving company in Denver, Colorado. Um, it's, it's called Legacy Moving. If anybody needs a, a move in Denver, but a little quick plug there. But um, he, his business has just under last year uh, uh, half a million dollars of gross revenue. Now, of course, he's got a ton of overhead with trucks and gas, and uh, especially paying the guys who work his trucks, right? But he can take that cash flow, and he already has some savings. He already has his capital reserves. So he can immediately meet his capital reserve and then he can put in his emergency cash reserve and he can put in the money that he set aside for his payroll for the next few months and then take loans out. Why not make the positive arbitrage on his payroll or yeah. the next truck he buys? So any business owner out there who has any kind of business and this is a, a fairly simple business that anybody can imagine. You have some trucks, you have some employees, and you have to, the hardest part is finding customers, right? So whatever the business is, if we have enough cash flow, and if we have sufficient capital reserves, there's a lot of things we can do. We can also work up towards those things and then do that. Now, in a household, most often, the first uh, 12 months or so, we're building up the capital reserve. So if you think about it, like uh, before, right before I really found out about this concept about two years ago, and, and I've been familiar with the IBC concept, but the 2.0 that you referred to is what I learned about two years ago, <clears throat> is I was looking around for a, quote, high-yield savings account. We've all heard of them, like Albert or Chime or Dave or Marcus or whatever, right? And I decided to go with the one from Goldman Sachs, and when I got me a Marcus account, and when I first got it, interest rates were a little bit different. They were paying 1.2% on that. Now, that might not sound like very much, but for a, quote, truly liquid savings account, that, that's not too bad, right? Compared to the point. Oh, one, you know, that, that normal banks are paying 1.2 is stellar. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. And so then almost uh, immediately within a month, they lowered it to 0 0.8. And I was like, Ooh. uh, and then about three months later, they lowered it to 0 0.6. And that's when I kind of threw my hands up and, you know, left a dollar in there and took the rest of the money out. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, I'm saying this is a truly high yield savings account. Now, <clears throat> for the record, I mentioned that the 10 year look back is 8.15%. I don't, I'm not making any predictions. And uh, I, I do have some crystal balls sitting here in my office up, up here in the Rockies in Colorado, but don't none of them work like in the movies, Mike. So I'm not making yeah. any predictions, but I doubt that the market, the stock market overall will do as well as it's done the last 10 years, just because it's been one of the best 10 years ever. Right? Yeah. 
So uh, just to be more conservative, uh, if I don't make eight, if I make seven or six percent, and I also think, I think probably anybody out there agree with me, I don't think it's going out on much of a limb to say interest rates are probably going up, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I think we all know about inflation and the pressure that's on the, I mean, heck, the Fed's practically announced that there's going to be a couple basis point increases, right? So it, uh, what I'm saying is if my borrowing cost goes up to 4% and my performance of my account uh, ends up being more like 6 boy, I'll still take that every day of the week, won't I, with two points yep. of spread? Right. Yep. Yeah. And, 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 and again, I'm not in the business, but it sounds to me like, if you pose that question and say, oh, and by the way, this is in a um, reputable life insurance vehicle from a reputable company, now it's, you know, you're not trying to sell something that is unproven. Right. And um, I, I'm, I, I probably, um, I, 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 mean, I mean, is it okay for me to say the companies that we're, we're using? Is it's it's a totally up to you. Sure. Right. Um, so it's, it's a company that a lot of people out there would have heard of or be familiar with, uh, particularly if anybody in their family might be a teacher, or firefighter, or a police officer, or anything like that, because National Life Group is one of the pre-approved salary slots for just about every <laughs> fire department and police department and um, school district in the country. So as I mentioned earlier, they've been around since the time of Lincoln, and there's rating companies that do ratings. Um, and so I'm just like you, you're just giving evidence of why you said there's a stable, safe company. Those rating companies don't rate how much money you're going to make, if they have a good customer service department. They only rate one thing, how safe and stable they are, how likely they are to be around to pay back money that you put with them, right? And uh, as you probably know, there's 22 possible categories or grades, and the company that we're working with has the highest of 22 possible grades, and it has positive forward guidance, which uh, having been in the mortgage industry, I'm sure you understand, there's only five companies that have that rating and have been given positive forward guidance, and uh, the the one we're working with is one of those. So. Mm. I feel about as comfortable as I could possibly be with that company. The other thing that I should mention is that they're not actually managing the money. Um, uh, And and I should talk about indexing here for a second, because some people out there might not be familiar with it. Um, uh, Quick quick overview of uh, the ways that you can invest money in insurance products is there's fixed stuff that works more or less like a CD or a bond where you make a guaranteed amount of money. And there's variable stuff that's the other end of the spectrum where you could make a lot of money, you could lose a lot of money. Editorial note, those tend to have a lot of fees. And I personally think that this is my personal financial opinion, but they're the devil. Um, I despise them. Okay. I want to make it clear that's not what I'm offering. Nor are we offering the pretty boring watching paint dry CD type thing. We're offering a hybrid that's guaranteed to not lose money, but participates in the upside of the stock market. By now, a lot of people have probably heard of this concept, whether it's in an annuity or in life insurance. What we're not talking about is an indexed mutual fund that can lose money and is subject to fees, okay? So um, the, the biggest problem that most people have for building wealth is there's fundamentally three wealth pillars. If you think about it, they're pretty obvious. Number one is risk, especially market risk but also on the other side of it, inflation risk. The second big wealth killer is taxes, because as we all learned from Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's not what you make, it's what you keep, right? And then the the third thing that we gotta be aware of is fees. Uh, Time Magazine, 60 Minutes, any number of other news outlets out there have done exposés talking about how dreadful the 401k market is in particular, and the mutual fund industry is in general with fees. So with those three wealth killers in mind, by putting our savings into any indexed concept with any company out there, not just the one I'm talking about, we are able to eliminate all of those wealth killers. By having a principal guarantee, we eliminate risk. By participating in the upside of the stock market, we also eliminate inflation risk. We do not have any asset management fees, which does not mean that the insurance part of it's free, but there are no asset management fees. and we don't have to pay any taxes on a loan because hello, a loan is an income, right? Yeah. There's a lot of upside there with a lot of 
mitigated risk. So I really think this sounds uh, like an exciting opportunity. So Chris, if uh, someone is interested in learning more um, about starting their own quote unquote bank, what's the best way they could reach out and connect with you? Well, I believe on your show notes there, you do have my uh, LinkedIn profile, and I do have some articles that uh, get into uh, some of the stuff I've been talking about here, um, uh, including our uh, award-winning technology that gives people turn-by-turn directions to get out of debt faster. We didn't even have time to get into that. It sounds like we're wrapping up. (laughs) Um, But they can go on my uh, LinkedIn page and... uh, I am uh, what they call a lion, L-I-O-N. I'm a LinkedIn open networker, so I would uh, encourage them to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, If for some reason they don't have a LinkedIn account um, on your show notes, if you're able to, um, you can provide my uh, phone number or email. If people try and reach out to me by phone, it would be preferable if they texted me first so I know they're not a a telemarketer, scammer, or something like that. Sure. What number would you like to provide? 719-207-6995. Excellent. Well, I will make sure that is in the show notes as well. Okay. And um, you already have the email, of course. So, uh, but uh, just, can I I say it here for the, uh, smartmoneychris at Gmail. And, um, you know, for the record, if people send me unrelated spam, I'll I'll just block it and report spam. But uh, I'm, uh, eager to talk to anybody who might have more questions. I also have a YouTube channel. Um, It's not an easy one to remember, so if anybody wants the YouTube channel, um, just reach out through any of those methods, and I'll provide the YouTube channel. Um, I've got five to ten minute videos that break down certain parts of this. Um, They're organized in a playlist. Um, the really good stuff about the infinite banking, you need to show up in my Zoom room and talk to me. (laughs) Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Thanks, Mike. And uh, if anybody out there, especially business owners, would like to see how to uh, run their business and have their own bank, that's what we do. It's the Build a Bank workshop. We have an on-demand workshop. So uh, there's a a 45-minute workshop people can request to learn more about the real details from the master David Wainer who taught me everything I've been talking about. Excellent. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.